guys, welcome to another podcast. The reason why you're seeing my face is because we are now on iTunes and other podcast-centric sites. So if you find that it's too long to listen to the entire podcast uh, on YouTube, you can go ahead and download the podcast via iTunes. Uh, just go to iTunes search and put project and then a space C-O-E or you can put Canadian Gamers or you can put Nintendo Fanboys but instead of an S put a Z. Alright? That's pretty much it. Enjoy the podcast. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Nintendo Fanboys. And today is going to be a really, really awesome episode. Uh, we're probably going to get at least three hits, which is just fantastic. That would be our best episode yet. That's right. And you'll notice, did you hear how clear Steven's voice is? All you people who always say he has a sexy voice, well, you're going to be uh, in luck because, uh, uh, well, a friend of his gave him a laptop. His friend's a multimillionaire and uh, just gives him laptops just like that. <laughs> and uh, so we're trying this out. Good God, that's a lot of background noise. Anyway, uh, so we're trying this out. We're going to see. Uh, you guys let us know if it's worse, better, whatever. If there's echoes, if there's ghosts in the machine, anything like that, just go ahead and let us know. So Stephen uh, actually put together this entire podcast. So you no joke. it's going to be a good one today. Exactly. Like a lot of subjects to cover. We have tons of stuff. We're going to talk about Metroid. We're going to talk about Pokemon Uranium. We're going to talk about plenty of stuff. So, Did you play Metroid? No, I did not. Me neither. So I don't know how we're going to talk about that, but okay. <laughs> you said we're All going right, to I've... talk about Metroid. You... Oh, okay, okay, fine. <laughs> wow, I can't get over how clear your voice is. This is amazing. Yeah, well, I, I think... I, 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 I'm always doubtful when you say that, so I'll wait till I hear myself on the podcast to know if you're actually right about this. I've been well, on my, end, on my end, it sounds glorious. And I don't say glorious very often. That's true. <laughs> okay, so what's, what have you been up to? What's going on? Well, last we talked, I, it's been a while. I'm on the fanboy side, so I don't remember what game I was playing back then. But I know I mentioned... The Powerpuff Girls uh, something. Oh, yeah, well... I'm over that phase now. I know I mentioned I was playing Monster Hunter Generations, and last we talked, I think I had about an hour in there. Yeah. And I added another hour of playtime. I can officially tell you that this is not for me. Okay. Monster Hunter, I have always wanted to try this series. I'm glad I finally did. I bought this. This was an, an impulse buy because... On the IGN Gamecast, they had a fellow there who really was into Monster Hunter, and they they dedicated an entire topic to Monster Hunter Generations, and he sold it very, very well. So I I, I thought, what the hell, I'm not playing anything right now on my 2DS, might as well try it out. And I was sure I was going to love it, but maybe when I was younger, when I had more time, when I was really into into those type of games, but it's just so overwhelming for me. There's just so much to do, and I, I, I don't know why. When when games give me too many options, I tend to feel overwhelmed. I, I like I like when I know that I can explore everything, and I, I know I'm not missing anything, but a game like that, there's just no way. And it's perfectly okay. It's It sounds like a fantastic game. Many people love it probably one of the most popular games in Japan. It's just not for me, and I'm glad I finally know that. And I've also, like you, you've been talking over the last few podcasts about the Telltale games, so I decided to try them out. So I completed Game of Thrones, and I, I believe we'll talk about Game of Thrones in the future, Canadian gamers, because there's a lot to say about that. Maybe even talk about the Telltale game in general. And after Game of Thrones, I started Tales of Borderlands, and I'm now on episode two of that one. And I've been having a blast with that one. That one is pretty good also. But then there's a little game called Pokemon Uranium, which will be our topic of the show. So I won't say much about that, but let me tell you I'm hooked right now. I'm about seven hours into that game. Never thought I'd be enjoying this, but that's all I'll say for now. What about you? What about you? 
Uh, let's see here. I don't remember what I was playing last time myself, actually. Um, hmm. What about right now? Right now. Well, let's see. Um, I know that I, I I went through all those Telltale games, and the last one I, I finished off was that download game from... Uh, you know the guys that made Journey? I forget what they were called. That game company, I think, is what they were called. And, um, like, the, the lead art director broke off from the company and started his own company uh, called Giant Squid, and he put together uh, a, a very a very similar game to Journey. Did you ever play that one? That's on my uh, bucket list. Like, I intend to play, play that as soon as I get a free night. Okay, because what's good with Journey is you can finish in one sitting. It's, like, maybe three hours. It's a very short game. It's not very long at all. Um, and you'll either love it or you'll be like my brother. And my brother was like, uh, I don't get it. He was like, this is like, what the hell is this crap? It's an extraordinarily artistic game. I, it resonated perfectly with me. Like, I thought it was amazing. Um, and Abzu is basically the same sort of, you get, you get the same feeling of it. It's essentially an, under, an underwater experience. Because calling it a video game, is a, that's going a little far. Sort of like the Telltale games, right? The Telltale games, yeah, okay, they're, they're quote-unquote video games, but really, they're not. It's more like, almost like watching like a movie, really. And that you can, you know, you have some dialogue options. And like you said, I think it would be a great idea um, to talk about that series and, and their games as a whole in a Canadian Gamers um, podcast at some point. So anyway... Um, Abzu is very much like that, though. Not, not with selecting uh, options and stuff, but it's more that it's an experience. You float around, you can't die. There, there's no enemies in the game except for these like, uh, little triangles. They look like pieces of Triforce that, if you get close to them, they electrically charge you. But you can get electrically charged 7,000 times. Nothing, like, you don't die. Nothing happens. Um, and, and I'm perfectly cool with that because it's about experiencing the music and the journey. That's what I loved about Journey was it, it's not about where you're going, it's about the journey to get there. And the, Abzu is, like, pretty much, I'm, I'm calling it, uh, to everyone I know, it's Journey Underwater. So, um, very, very good game, very fun. I'm trying to think what else I did recently, because right now, at the moment, I'm not playing anything, um, which is very odd for me, very odd. Normally, uh, like, I mean, I'm playing Pokemon Uranium because of you, uh, you were telling me you gotta you gotta try this out and and do a video a day on it and keep you entertained and you know the usual stuff. Oh, yeah. uh, oh Child of Light, that's the one. I went back and I finished uh, Child of Light um, on my profile. I finished it on uh, a friend's profile when I reviewed it way back when. But I finally had time to go back and and actually polish it off on my profile. It was right at the end of the game, and um, and I was telling you that. It's, that's a really great game because it is so short. It's a traditional um, Japanese RPG style game with, you know, you take turns before you fight, the whole thing. It has a very simple but fun battle system where you can interrupt your enemy's attacks. And what I love about it is it's about an 8 to 10 hour game, which is awesome. You know, especially for like a guy like you, it's perfect. And there's even a version on the Vita, which led to a whole other discussion, which I don't want to talk about. We'll, uh, S- Stephen will have a video coming up eventually, I hope. Uh, just make sure you shoot the video in landscape. Don't shoot it in portrait. <laughs> That's and, uh, I know. Uh, did you get any packages, by the way? I did not go to the mail today. Well, go to the mail tomorrow, uh, then. Because but I need to wait for three packages anyway, so... Yeah, I'm just curious because like you, you know me, when I get a package, I have a lot of trouble not opening it. I'm like, I'm yeah, well, you could do three different videos. Uh, well, I could splice them all together if you want to do it like that. Just don't do "Hi guys, it's Steven here" type of thing on every video. Because I'll, <laughs> I'll put I'll it together. Wait. I'll be a good boy. All right. Um, so anyway, I lost complete track of where the hell we were going, but yeah, I, I was playing Child of Light. Uh, went on to Abzu, and now I'm I'm in the mood for a JRPG, believe it or not. And I've been debating what to do. And then you suggested, well, why don't you, you know, why don't you try uh, this Pokemon Uranium, which we'll get to afterwards, because I don't want to talk too too much about that. Obviously, right now I don't want to 
regurgitate uh, anything. But believe it or not, I'm actually thinking... I looked at my um, list. I'm going to tangent here. I looked at my uh, release list I have for 2016 of games that I actually want to play or that I really am interested in, and there's like nothing for the whole rest of the year. And I know there's some big games coming out, but I don't want to spend any money. I'm cheap. Um, like Battlefield 1 looks cool, but would I really get into it? You know what I mean? And I'm getting to the point now, I've taken your advice, where I just really want to play games for me. Um, if, if I cover them for the, the channel, great. If not, well, you know, I have the retro stuff for the channel, which is what gives us all our bread and butter anyway. So I know there's Pokemon Sun and Moon later, so I was like, do I really want to play another Pokemon right now, you know? I'm worried that I'm going to get the, like I was saying before, I think in the last episode, that I don't want to get series fatigue before a new Pokemon comes out. That would be really stupid. Um, and I'm looking forward to the, la- uh, what is it, The Last Guardian? I just, I know it's not going to live up to the hype, but I really like um, Ico and I really liked uh, Shadow of the, uh, yeah, Shadow of the Colossus. So I'm looking forward to that. And then, of course, there's the PlayStation VR experience and Dragon... Uh, I was just going to say Dragon Warrior 7. Dragon Quest 7. And yes, there's King of Fighters, but I'm not in the mood. You know, like, it comes out very soon, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm not in the mood to, uh, you know, practice and get online, get my butt handed to me. I've actually really been in the mood for a nice, calm uh, Japanese RPG, and I've been debating between a few of them, but I think I'm going to stop talking there. Because uh, I, I, I think I'm going to get into one or two, and we'll see. It'll be a surprise which one I'm, uh, I decide to take. So that's pretty much, uh, that's pretty much it. Um, you want to add anything before we jump on into some of the news or topics or whatever? Yeah, I just want to try to hype up a bit something we have on Tuesday that I'm very excited about. Because I managed to convince you to do something for once. And we'll see how far it goes, because like I tell you, I told you... It, the series' success will depend on if you enjoy the game or not. If you don't enjoy the game, the, the quality will suffer. If you do enjoy it, the quality will be up there. So Jared has begun a brand new Let's Play of Pokemon Uranium that will start on Tuesday. And I just want to tell you guys that if you're curious, if you're like me, you've never actually played Pokemon fan games because Pokemon fan games have existed for like decades now. I've never actually played one, but this is probably the one that has gathered the most attention, uh, the most hype. I've never seen something like that. And Jared has tried it, and so far the game. We'll talk a bit about the game la- later, but I, I think it'll be it'll warrant a few episodes at least, and I think you'll want to take a look at that if you're a fan of that. So look for that on Tuesday morning. Yeah, and full, like, I, I feel it's kind of stupid. I almost feel like we should talk about it right now because we keep saying later, later, I later. I it for later, but... <laughs> but, yeah, so I'm not going to... I won't say anything else. Um, we'll jump on into the news. But there's, uh, like, there's a lot to talk about about this particular uh, fan game. So, uh, okay, let's just pause all the Pokemon talk <laughs> until, uh, until after. So the first thing, I don't know if you wanted to read them out, if you want me to read them out, um, but I'm going to start, I guess, with uh, the Axiom Verge uh, news. So basically, it's coming to the Wii U. Steven's going to tell you a little bit about some features and um, why it's being touted as the very best version. Um, but the news is that it's going to be 20 bucks, uh, well, 20 US dollars, and uh, it's coming out in uh, just under two weeks on September 1st. So why is this going to be, like, the version to get? Well, first off, before I talk about that, did you try that game? I have not. You have not? Okay, because this is a Metroidvania game, and this is one of your favorite uh, genres, and apparently it's a very, very nice game. So I just wanted to tell people out there, this is a Nintendo-centric uh, podcast obviously i know a lot of you guys listening have a wii u buy that on september 1st it's gonna it's supposedly already an amazing game and i think it was made by one dude and the dude t- told uh, told us not me for anything, but told nintendo life <laughs> he told Steven. they told me that this will be a pixel perfect port and it will be the best version of the game for a few, few he, he made a few reasons. Like he said, it's going to have off-screen gameplay, which is always awesome. And it's going to have also leaderboards, I believe, for the speedrun. But that's, that's, all, that's not really why, for me, this is a must 
buy because I haven't bought that game yet. I was debating whether I should get like one with trophies, but then he said this this will have the option of having a map at all times on the gamepad. And I don't know about you, but since the Nintendo DS days when I played the first Castle and on that one, I always prefer playing my Metroidvania games on the DS or 3DS simply because like I've said before, when you play a Metroidvania game, I don't know about you and other people, but for me, I basically pr press pause to check the map every like 10 to 30 seconds. So having a second screen that has the map on at all times makes the game that a lot more fun for me and makes it a lot more uh, approachable. So just having a second screen at all times, this for me seals the deal that it, it is indeed going to be the best version of one of the one of a apparently a very good game so i think uh, every nintendo fan should be excited about the opportunity to play a great metroidvania game on september 1st i'm looking to see um more i mean i i read a lot about this and uh, a good friend of mine uh was hyping this up for a long, long, long time. They were talking about, you know, um, my God, I think for like for like a year, year and a half, something like that, like following um, the development of the game. And I don't know why I never really did anything with this game. Like, I don't... I'm looking at it now, like a few things, and yeah, it looks cool. I don't know why... Uh, eh, that's weird. I'm a special individual sometimes. Well, now you'll have a chance to dust off your good old Wii U. Yeah. Oh, th there are some really cool trophies, though. <laughs> no, I'm just looking. Because this is, this is the thing, man. This is what really upset me with uh, Song of the Deep. Like, here, complete the game and, um, with under 40% of the items. You know, stuff like that. I, really, I love that kind of crap. Because it forces you to get good at the game and really try yeah. to, um, to, to like master it. Like, like we keep saying, I can't tell you, ever since you mentioned like Nintendo having like a metal system or something like that, just how awesome that would be for the retro games and their new stuff, of course, as well. But anyways, no, um, I'm th right there with you with Axiom Verge. Most certainly, most definitely, whatever you want to say, if... Um, if you can use the gamepad as a map, yeah, that's going to make it like a bajillion times better. But not only that, for me, gaming on the the uh, gamepad is so much more convenient for when Serena... Let's say Serena's like, you know what, I want to watch uh, this today, and I'm not really feeling it. Um, I can always just boot up the Wii and, and play it like that. And that, to me, is is about equal to having the map for me. I understand, I'd have to pause the game like 50 million times and stuff like that, but it, it makes a difference. When you share the TV, you have a big open area, and, and you want to just you know play something or whatever, it makes a big difference, because otherwise, on the other versions of the game, I'd have to, you know, I'd have to be like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come home, and that'll be the only time I'll have to like actually play the game, because after, like, you know, I'm not going to hog the TV the whole night. So, yeah, man, uh, so September 1st, so a Thursday... Okay, cool. Very, very cool. So what I'm going to do, I'm um, going to move on. Um, now, do you want to save Pokemon Uranium to the very end? Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, yeah let's talk okay. about that at the end. Okay. So um, we have some Metroid news. Yes, yeah, so uh, this we is actually... a perfect segue into Metroid. Exactly. Because <laughs> we just talked about a, Met a Metroid-inspired title. And this is, I want to go in multiple directions here because I want to talk about Metroid overall. Because I, I heard this, I did not double check this, but I heard that it was either this year or next year is the 30th anniversary of Metroid. Is it this year? Yeah, I okay, think so. so. If it's this year. So there's a lot to talk about here. Because usually I'm just checking. Yeah, it is. So you, Nintendo has been doing a huge uh, 20th anniversary of Pokemon this year. They did something for Zelda's 25th. They did something when Mario was, whatever, 60 years old. I don't remember. Yeah, yeah. And for Metroid, it's silence. Silence, silence, silence. And there's this game coming out soon called Metroid Prime Federation Force. And nobody's talking about it. Nintendo's barely mentioning it. 
every time they release a trailer, there's like a million dislikes. Nobody wants that game, but we're going to have it anyway. And it it seems like Nintendo's abandoning the franchise. Well, like, everybody's saying or hoping that there's going to be a Metroid at NX launch, and I'm not so sure anymore. Like, I hope, don't get me wrong, I hope there is. Everybody thinks that Retro's working on one, which would be cool. But it's like a really missed opportunity this year, especially for the 2D side of games with Metroid. And I know we're going to talk a bit about the fan-made game later on, but right now, like, I would have loved, like, a brand new Zero Mission or an updated port with medals, like trophies. When they when they do add trophies, hopefully they will. Like, I really think they won't, but hopefully they will. If they do, that would be a big win for us. Like, I would just like to re-download all these Metroid games. Here, have my money. And just play them with trophies or medals or whatever we... They want to call it, but what? What do you feel about this? What What are Nintendo doing with Metroid? I know it's you never been true? their number one selling franchise, but it hasn't sold terribly here. Like all the Metroid Prime game sold a few million copies, so it's not the end of the world. Like so at some point, you have to take a, a a small risk and accept the fact that you're maybe not going to make as much money or your money back, but just knowing that you're going to give off quality software, which in terms give, gives your name and gives your hardware a bigger name. I don't know. It's it's strange. Okay. Um, this is something... Remember, guys, um, this... Five years ago, which Metroid game came out? Five years ago? Yeah. That would be... Would be other, other M? Are you talking about other M? No, no, I'm talking about nothing. Okay. <laughs> That's my point. Five years ago was the 25th anniversary, and they did the same damn thing. We got nothing. In August, I think it was August 2nd, something like that, was the series' 30th anniversary, and yet again, not even a happy 30th, that Samus, on Twitter. Nothing, rien, like nada, and and it pisses me off because like I'm a guy that lived through the the, the Sega days, right? Um, I was always um, more of a Nintendo fan than a Sega fan, but there were certain franchises that I loved. I mean, I loved like Panzer Dragoon. On the Saturn, man, like, I, I just, I love that. I know today people are like, oh, it's such a simple concept, you know, just like a rail shooter. Uh, and forget about the, the RPG Panzer Dragoon Saga. Let's just talk about, like, the, the core series there. And yes, there were only three games, and they were only on the Saturn. But, like, when Dreamcast came out, and you didn't hear about it. And yeah, there were rumors and this and that. And yes, Orta eventually came out on the Xbox. Uh, I was just going to say the Xbox One. The original Xbox. And, and yes, it was originally in development for the the Dreamcast. What I'm getting at is it was a series that I really enjoyed that for a long stretch of time, long period of time, was gone. The same with Streets of Rage. Like, it, it was years, and it's been years, that this is, it's just, ever since the Genesis, boom, it's gone. It doesn't exist anymore. And the thing is, why I mention that is because I'm kind of used to this crap. But with Metroid, it's different. Nintendo's not Sega. We've been over this multiple times. And much like Dragon Quest, I, I, I said this many years ago. I said, like, are we going through the second dark age of Dragon Quest? Because ever since... Oh, damn, I don't have it here. Um, was it Joker 2? Was that when it started? Like the last big stretch where we had years and years of no Dragon Quest news for North America. That was the last game, I believe, that was released here until... Okay. So it was like five to ten years... Well, maybe not ten years... Well, let me see. Okay, hold on. I don't like lying to you guys on a podcast here. Um, uh, DQ Joker 2. Let's see. Uh, Wikipedia. Because it'll give me the North American release date. It was like 2012 or something, 2011. Yeah, okay, 2011, and we got nothing pretty much until Dragon Quest Heroes. And, I mean, we, we, we've talked many times, actually, about this, about saying how, like, is the series, like, is this it? Is it over? And then to our amazement, or our shock, 
when they announced, you know, they announced that Dragon Quest uh, 7 and 8 would be coming to the 3DS, and both of us were just absolutely flabbergasted and super excited, and it's just phenomenal. Um, but let's zero back in on Metroid for, for now, because, I mean, that's what we're talking about. Metroid was my first experience in all of this about going through a franchise that just literally disappeared, and it predates all of them, with the exception of Dragon Quest. Dragon Quest was the very first time I was like, oh, this sucks. When, um, when uh, Enix USA closed down their offices when they were going to bring uh, Dragon Quest V to North America's Dragon Warrior V, I was so upset when they, uh, when they mentioned that in, the, uh, in Nintendo Power way, way, way back when. But it wasn't a series that was really well-known to friends and, and even family, cousins, you know, like that kind of stuff. But Metroid was. Super Metroid, I'm not kidding. Like, you guys know how much I'm a fan of uh, A Link to the Past. Everybody knows that. If you've, if you've watched anything with COE, you know, like, A Link to the Past is my game. Like, that's my, like, I love that game. Super Metroid is there. Like, I mean, it's... It's there for me. That that blew my friggin' little mind <laughs> when I was younger. I will never forget, you know, the last Metroid is in captivity, the galaxy is at peace, and then the... <laughs> uh, that, I, to this day, just saying that to you guys, I start getting little goosebumps on my, uh, on my arms, because it's so... It's such an freaking awesome game. And then going through the N64, I was there day one for N64. Mario 64 was awesome. And yes, at that particular point in time, I was changing because I was upset that Nintendo, like they announced Super Mario 64, that's phenomenal, but I was like, where the hell is everything else? While PlayStation and even the Sega Saturn, there were like tons of games that were in development that we knew about, that were coming out, that were, you know, all of this sort of stuff. So I was starting to get a little... Uh, with Nintendo, about what really happened was after the launch of um, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, I was really concerned. Like, I was like, what the hell is going on? Because to me, because I had, I'd, I'd lived through the NES and I've lived through the SNES, um, or as you call it, the Super NES. <laughs> I love that when you say that. It's funny. Uh, anyway, um, I'm the only one or what? No, 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 not at all. It's just, it's the way you say it <laughs> that I like. Um, going through those two platforms, for me, and again, everybody's got to remember, we're not multi-millionaires here, right? We didn't have every game under the sun. I experienced a lot of games because I had a lot of friends in, in school that had all these different games, but I personally did not own every single game. What, what you would used to do is like, let's say I had Super Mario Brothers 2 and someone else bought Castlevania 3. Well, we would, you'd play through your game, lend the game to someone else, they'd lend you theirs, and then you'd play through that one, and you'd just keep going and going and going. So that's how I experienced so many games. And then you'd trade sometimes if you really loved the game, things like that. So the pillars for Nintendo, for me, way back, were Mario was first, Zelda was second, Metroid was third, well, I don't know if I'd say third, but it was like way up there for me. Again, just me. Um, and Kid Icarus. Kid Icarus, we're talking NES, of course. When it came time for the SNES, I, Zelda and, and Metroid almost surpassed, and I can't believe, like I can't even say it, but it's the truth. I loved Super Mario World. Like I played the living crap out of that game way back when, when my brother and I were really young, but nothing compared to um, both... Zelda and Super Metroid. Like, Super Metroid, I, I don't even remember what the, our minimum item completion was, but it was, like, something disgusting, you know? I, I don't want to even say a number because I don't recall. But it was, it was up there. And when the N64 came around, and it was evident, you know, it was evident that Nintendo was not going to regain uh, control of the market. Sony had just done too much damage to them. And, um, and they were, like, just taking off, you know? Like, you, you had that moment where you realized, um, like, you had an epiphany when you bought your PlayStation 2, and I started sending you some games and stuff, and you realized that, you know, 
like had this RPG been released on the N64, it would have got nines and 9.5s because it was so rare. But on a PlayStation, because there's just so many games, it's going to get like a seven. You know what I mean? Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. And so when it became evident to me that Metroid was gone, like it was finished, they were not going to make another Metroid game after Super Metroid, I was so annoyed. I was just so, so annoyed. And it was, it was fueling that fire of like, well, you know what? To hell with Nintendo. Um, but then when they came back, you know, with Metroid Fusion and Metroid Prime, I was so friggin' happy. It was crazy. I was like, this is awesome. And then to experience that same thing all these years later, because, like, when the hell did Other M... Let me check this out. Other M came out a long time ago now. I think that, too, was like... Let's see. Yeah, man. Holy crap. It's been six years, man. Six years since we had Other M. Wow. And for them not to even say... You know, oh, yay, happy birthday. We're going to release uh, Metroid Federation Force. Like, it's sad because I'm, I'm, I'm the same with you right now, man. I don't know if we're going to get a Metroid game for the NX. I really don't because this series has never sold well in Japan. It is a North American series and a European series. And I'm wondering if a lot of that has to do with that, that Nintendo right now wants to focus their priorities on their worldwide system sellers. Well, they and should maybe... I, they, they're smarter than that because America, especially uh, the U.S., United States, is the biggest video game market in the world. It is. It is, so, which is what I don't understand. That's what I'm saying. Like, it doesn't make any sense. It's as if they only want... Games that will sell well in all regions. And by well, I, I, I'm not saying, you know, like, like for example, um, Pokemon. If Pokemon sells the most in North America, but it still does, um, you know, really well in Japan in relation to other games, that's their focus. Or like Mario will do that or, or whatever. But it just doesn't make sense. Why are you releasing, and no offense, okay, to the fans out there, but why the hell are you releasing a new Kirby game? And you're not releasing a core Metroid game. I, I, don't, I don't understand that. And, and now to basically, basically be like up yours for the 30th anniversary? Dude, that's sad, man. Like, this is something you should celebrate. Samus was the female hero. There was, there was none before her. She was the one that really, you know, pioneered that, having a female lead. Do you, like, I don't get Nintendo sometimes. They should be playing that up like crazy. They could say, like, you know, the, the heroine that, you know, started it all sort of deal in commercials and stuff like that. And, and really being proud of what they've done over these past 30 years. But instead, it's like, well, nah, never mind. And they've been like this for a while, guys. Even dating back to, like, Metroid Prime, it was incredible that we even got Metroid Fusion and Metroid Zero Mission internally developed. Well, actually, no, were they developed by Intelligent Systems? I, I don't recall. But anyways, I know that, it, I believe it was either them or it was someone else, but I don't think it was like a full-on third party, if you know what I mean. And, and I knew this was coming, because having Metroid Prime developed in North America, I was like, no way, they don't have faith. You know, they're just, like, pushing it off and being, like, whatever. And, yes, it turned out to be a great game and all of that, but it's rare Nintendo does that. They do have really... They, now they have a lot of faith in that developer, um, but when they did Other M and they were like, oh, uh, you know, it's going to be done by... Um, what was it? Team Ninja? or yeah. Well, like, those, whatever. Um, I knew it. I was like, no, they, they, they don't have faith in this franchise anymore. And now what they're doing with Metroid Federation Force, after six years of no Metroid games, and now you're releasing something like that? I, I, I will be shocked if we get a new Metroid at, for NX. Mm. That sucks, man. Because Metroid Prime, even if, we, even if we get the 3D, like, 
I always enjoyed the 2D games better, but Metroid Prime I'll admit, was a very, very nice lead on 3D game. I've never what? sadly I I'm one of the few guys who actually enjoyed the sequel better. And I sadly never tried the third one because it was on the Wii and I hated the using Wii remote in first person shooters. I hated that. So I never tried it. I know that at some point I think you could you can play it with the remote now, so I might actually go back and play it at one day. But even if it's another Metroid Prime, I'd be satisfied. I wish they would do like both. Maybe like they did with Metroid Prime, because that was amazing. We got two games on the same day, right? Or supposed yep. to. One, yep. one in both John, so... Sad, man. Yeah, it's sad, and I'm telling you, for all the fans out there, I don't think... Like, getting Metroid Federation Force is not a good sign. You should not look at that as a good sign. Because I look at that as the exact opposite. I look at that as a very, very bad sign. Especially since it's probably going to be a like a very, very mediocre game at best. Yeah. Like if I read the review of Metroid Blast Ball, which, which is a packed in game with that, and was actually released in North America for free on the eShop. And Nintendo Life gave it a 5 on a 10. And Nintendo Life are very generous when it comes to Nintendo games. So you're probably looking at a 3 or a 4 anywhere else. So that's not promising. Yeah. You want to talk about when it comes out? I think it's the next week, right? It's tomorrow. Federation Force comes out tomorrow. Yeah, August 19th. There you go. Not bad, eh? You're all, uh, you got your pre-orders in, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, me too. I pre-ordered three copies. I want one for the so, dog and the wife, too. <laughs> <laughs> the dog. Exactly. I wanted to talk about that. You mentioned that, the phantom release of uh, Federation Force. I don't know if you wanted to talk about, like, what exactly you wanted to talk about? That was just that was just included in the, the overall team. It's just the fact that you just nailed it, like, it comes out tomorrow. Well, by the time you're watching this podcast or listening to it, it's going to be already out. already out. But I didn't know, and you didn't know, so... I'm guessing most people don't know, don't realize it's coming out tomorrow. Yeah, and I, and I'm sure they did that on purpose, given the lackluster, um, the lackluster, uh, whatever it's called, the like like response that the game is getting. But there is some good news for Metroid fans, and I want you to tell them what is the good news. Well, the good news is that some fans, like you, call, you let's call them Metroid fans, decided to make their own project and remake. Metroid 2, I believe it was called Return of Samus, but you prob- yep. probably know a lot more. Which no, was no, a Game a- Boy game, and I always... That's probably, like, the original Metroid on, on the NES. I was a bit too young to enjoy that one, but when I was a, a kid, my mom used to... Be, well, she still does, but she babysitted people, and sometimes they were around the same age as me, and there was a kid that always had some Game Boy games, and one of them was Metroid 2, and I always had fun playing it was a unique one because you had to collect or kill a certain amount of Metroids. It was very different than the other ones, and it was a nice little Game Boy game. And a nice group of people decided to remake that game, and it it doesn't... like it, It's basically an entire new game. It's kind of like what, what Metroid Zero Mission is to the original Metroid. And I think that was the point. Since the original Metroid was already remade, they decided to... Remake Metroid 2 using a similar engine to Zero Mission, or at least it looks like it. And it's a bit; it seems a bit more action-paced. I have not played it. I've just seen some trailers. I plan to play it eventually. And it was a nice little homage to uh, to Metroid, and, and I think people were really excited about it. They were. I don't remember. Did we ever find out how many times this damn thing was downloaded? I uh, no, I don't think they, I don't think they they mentioned that. But well, yeah, go ahead. No, no, I think you were getting to the same point as I was. No, I was actually just gonna say that, like, it it, you know, how long did it last? Like a day, two days? Yeah, something like that. It didn't last very long. And I just booted it up. I just wanted to see. Um, and it was actually called AM2R, which is another Metroid 2 remake, but this one blew my mind. It, it uses the, um, the same engine as Zero Mission, 
and it's breathtaking. Like, it, it really is. It's absolutely breathtaking, and I will be using this uh, in future videos as gameplay because I I have to play this. Like, it looks absolutely awesome, and the, the feedback has been absolutely phenomenal, and we, we originally were going to talk about our impressions and things like that, but I think we'll save that because I, both of us haven't played it yet, but I'm, we're definitely going to get into that. Um, but we'll save that for another podcast. But yeah, it, because it's, I want, like, like I told you, like the topic of the show today is Pokemon Uranium, and I, don't, I wanted us to actually get a good idea of the game. I wanted us to play like for a few hours each. And to actually be able, I want to, and I want to do the same about Metroid. I want to be fair, yep. and that's why I think we're going to do that in the next fanboys or, or a future episode at one point. Because I, I also, I don't, I haven't downloaded it yet, but I have it uh, at my this. I have it ready to go in, in case I need to. Yeah, and um, and it's just like it. It's really it upsets me so much. Like it's awesome, it is. It's absolutely awesome having having like these fan games and stuff like that. But it's so damn upsetting that there's nothing official. Uh, like God, uh, it, it's it's disgusting to me that Federation Force is Nintendo's game for the 30th anniversary of Metroid. That is so friggin' sad. And here you have this beautiful remake. That you know, fan, a fan or fans, um, you know, put their blood, sweat, and tears into to do something really special for the 30th anniversary, and it's it's just really really sad. But it it does tie into another topic uh, that we have, which is about Nintendo removing fan made games, and just what do you guys think about that? And Stephen, you can tell us what you think, and then I'll chime in. I'm curious a bit. To see what you think, though, I want I want to hear your opinion first because I think I have a okay, different sure. opinion than everybody else on this, and I don't want to influence yours because I know yeah, you. Yeah, no, All right, go ahead. Not a problem. Um, okay, so I I'm one of these people where I completely understand, and it's not going to be a popular it's not going to be a popular um, opinion to have. Okay, but I do completely understand Nintendo pulling these games, um, and the best thing I the reason why is. Let's say I I had like a a project COE mascot. Let's say Stephen and I put together and we created this giant penis, and that was the uh, that was like the COE mascot. And if that mascot probably stays, be your mascot, yeah, probably. <laughs> and if someone were to take that mascot and then create, say, a cartoon series, okay, but never asked us to use that particular um that character and they they put it on youtube and they didn't monetize it okay it wasn't monetized they weren't going to make any money off of this but they still released that to the public i would be upset i would be because i had nothing to do with that i didn't sanction that it would most likely be steven who sanctioned it but that's a discussion for another day uh, but no but you know what i like I don't. I, I think my opinion is going to be not a very popular one, like I said. Um, but I do understand Nintendo doing this because the general public um, doesn't know. They don't pay attention to these sorts of things. And seeing someone play uh, a Pokemon game or seeing someone play a Metroid game, um, they might be like, "Oh, wow! I got to go pick that up. That looks great," or something like that. Or not even not even necessarily from that perspective. It's more of the perspective that you have spent millions of dollars um, bringing and establishing these characters to where they are today, and having someone else use your creation without asking. Even though I understand, I totally get it, like, you, you have all the best intentions. If Nintendo's not making you a Metroid game, well, you know what? Screw them. I'm going to make a Metroid game. But, guys, the, the thing is, you, you can't make a Metroid game. Like, it belongs to Nintendo. It's their, it's their IP. Like, I, I, and I understand, I totally, totally get it, that no money is involved. Like, the Metroid 2 remake, I just, um, I double-clicked on it, I want to make sure it worked, and it looks beautiful. I mean, it looks absolutely beautiful. 
um, this Pokemon Uranium game that we're going to get into and talk all about, I have lots and lots of positive things to say. I, I, I truly do. But at the end of the day, you are creating things or including elements and things that are not your own. You know, and I know that you can get into a lot of gray areas. Like, for example, um, a lot of people, musicians, right? They'll cover songs that they never asked to cover. You know, like Metallica will do like a Castlevania theme at one of their bands and, and people won't even know what the hell it is. Um, you'll get, uh, you see it on YouTube all the time, these violinists and uh, pianists uh, doing all kinds of, um, you know, video game related um, like songs and stuff and technically I don't know how that works I truly don't know how that works but those songs are all copyrighted like that music belongs to to certain game companies and I don't I mean covers are one thing you know like I don't know how that works I truly don't I don't know what the legality is but I know that when you are talking about IP in this context it gets really it, it gets complicated, and I know that a lot of people like fan fiction, for example. So, like, people will write Game of Thrones novels, okay, that are just fan fiction. It's all, it's, it's just fan, well, a fan or fans got together and they made their own book. But, and they didn't sell it, you know, it's online, and, and there you go. And is that, is that really so different than what these people are doing? And to me, yeah, in a way it is. And the reason is because this medium is a little bit different. And I don't know if I'm, I'm coming across as, as making any sense or if I'm, I'm contradicting myself or if everyone thinks I'm on drugs, but like, I, I, I'm in a strange place here because some fan games I, 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 I really enjoy I really do, but I totally understand Nintendo, you know, giving cease and desist orders for these things. I get it. I, I totally understand. And I know it upsets a lot of people, but again, it is their property. It belongs to Nintendo. And as much as that sucks, that's in place to protect Nintendo from people potentially making games like this and, and profiting from them or damaging their brand. But I want to let you talk, okay? I don't want to... I hope I didn't influence you in any way, shape, no, or form. No, no, no. Uh, I'm going to try to just give an example to for, further... Uh, further uh, add to your point. What if the game sucked? And what if someone... Like, let's... Someone who's, who's not as knowledgeable as you are on this series, and stumbles about about that game, and he says, oh, this is Metroid, I used to play this uh, as a kid, let's see how to, and the game totally sucks, and this kid, or, or not this kid in, in this scenario, but this adult, thinks, oh wow, this, this series sucks now, I'm not going to buy my new kid the, the latest Metroid, it's just an example, it's overly exaggerated, it's, well, it, just to tell you, like, if I was Nintendo, I would do the exact same thing they did. Like, I would appreciate the fact that fans are making games, and I don't want fans to stop making games. But as soon as they release it to the public, that's that's going to happen. And I and I think for these guys, it, it turned out great for them, because they got a lot of attention, and I think the guy even got a job off of, off of, off of that. So, and I, I think people are a bit overreacting on this. It's I think it's a good story. Like the game will forever be available online. Of course, you have to take a little uh, riskier risk when you download it from another source, but it will always be available at some at some point. And he got his name heard. And apparently, the game is great, but it's just the fact that it's your IP. And what if the game doesn't go in the direction you want it? What if the game sucks? What if? There's are many what if that it could possibly uh, endanger your IP or make it look bad or make it look in a direction that you don't want to go. For example, the, many of these Pokemon games have severe major teams. I don't think Uranium is one of those. It's although it's a bit more mature, but some of these games have like curses and uh, and murders and stuff like that. That Nintendo doesn't want this to be in the same uh, discussion. They don't want this to be represent, representing their brand or their particular IP. And I know that there are 
some companies out there who are a bit more friendlier towards fan-made games. But I really, really think Nintendo is not in the wrong at all doing this, and I have no problem with them doing that. And, and I'm totally open to hearing the other side of the, the coin, because I know that some people take Nintendo are making mistakes, that this is free advertising, advertising for them, and... If you want to share your opinion in the comments section below, I really, really would like to hear it because I'm sure, like, this is not like a clear cut uh, view. Like, I know there are uh, there are pros and cons to both sides, but if I was Nintendo, I would basically do the exact same thing that, that they did. Well, that sucks. I thought we were going to have a debate here. <laughs> no, I, I was certain you were you you were not. I, I thought you had the other uh, the other side, but. That's why I didn't want to say my stuff first, but I guess. But I just wanted to add to your point. I think I think I think Nintendo was in the right here. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, absolutely. There, there is no question about that. Um, and well said. I mean, really well said. But I think I, I want to again reiterate what Stephen just said in the sense that. Um, Please, like, let us know. Don't just leave a comment, oh, you guys are morons, Nintendo, you know, is in the wrong, may they burn in hell. Like, no, that's stupid and immature. Um, leave a real genuine comment of, of how you feel about these sorts of things. But always keep in perspective what Steven said. I mean, what if, what if this Metroid 2 remake is garbage? What if Pokemon Uranium is just flat out awful? Do you not see how that could damage the IP? Uh, and just, just keep things like that in mind. And, you know, like I said, I, I covered books and I covered, um, I covered music, too. So anything that you guys want, I am not a lawyer, but Stephen might be. <laughs> um, so I don't know Only the legality. At Only at night. Oh, my gosh. He's like Batman. <laughs> Okay, so uh, let's see. What are we going to do? I just want to um, add quickly, yep. though, that the, the thing about this, it's a bit more different for me, and it's a bit more hard to swallow, is the fact that there are no Metroid games at all. When it comes to Pokemon, we basically have a Pokemon every year, but this, there's no Metroid, so we finally have one, and they take it down. So I understand the burn that fans are feeling with this. It would be a bit what easier if Nintendo was actually doing stuff with the franchise, but it's still it's still in there, right? You're, that's right. Tomorrow, man, big day. Exactly. Tomorrow. What are you talking about? They had to shut down that uh, remake for sure because Federation Force has all the thunder in the world, baby. It's going to be a triple million seller, man. Oh, I, I was going to say. Five, we said was the new Mario. Wait for Federation Force. Oh yeah, baby. I, at least dozens of copies are going to be sold in the first hour. Oh, yeah. Okay, so you had something you wanted to mention about Pokemon Snap. Oh, yeah, what did you that's right. You never played that, right? Nope. Not even, never saw it, not even... For no, 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 saw it, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know exactly what it is. Okay. This is I just one, it's coming right now, it's been confirmed for the North American, uh, not, sorry, the European uh, eShop. And I really suck at saying European, as you can see. Yes, you do. So maybe you should give it a shot. Let me know how it's said. Euro. European. European. Oh, there yeah. you go. So it, there's like a silent Y at the start? Yeah, it's English. <laughs> Who knows? Okay. And so it, was, <laughs> it was released on the North American Wii eShop, so it's probably going to make its way over here. And when it, when it does, you're going to review it. I already... already you, you just said it. North American again. When it, when it is coming, because it eventually will be, I assume. Okay, this is okay, a yep. Steven Lacroix guarantee. Like, Pokemon Snap is coming its way here soon. And Jared will review it, another guarantee right there. Because you need to play this. It's a two-hour game at max. Yeah, okay. And That's fine. One of the best N64 games ever released, and it's only that. Like, you can... Comp I'm not saying, like, beat the game in two hours. Like, in two hours, you can beat the game multiple times and get all the Pokemon. Fill up your Pokedex in two hours. Because there, there's not the 150 Pokemon. It's not the, like you need to capture uh, photos of Pokemon. It's an on-rails game, man. Like you, you talked about Panzer Dragoon and obviously I'm not going to compare the two, but it's the same situation. It's just, it feels like an, a team adventure part. It's just a blast to play through. 
And as a kid, you have to remember that we did not have any 3D Pokemon games at the time, so this was amazing to finally get to explore the Pokemon world in 3D. I'm not sure if the game holds up as well. I haven't played it, actually, since it, since it was released back in the day, but I'm pretty sure it does. If it does it, well, I'm, I know you'll tell me, but it's, it's just I wanted to let guys know Pokemon Snap is on the way. Cool. And, uh, all right, well, you'll harass me to review everything, so that's cool. And you also put Sun and Moon updates. I don't know what you wanted to talk oh, about. I did. I don't remember. But there's basically a new trailer every week, and I don't remember what they announced last week. I think they announced... Oh, yeah, last week they announced the Alolan form of Raichu, which is will now be electric and psychic, and it looked pretty cool. And there was a Meow. That was now dark type, and there's another one which I forgot. But anyway, it's it's not that important. We'll we'll cover Pokemon Sun and Moon. We we, we we've already talked about a lot of Pokemon stuff today, so we'll yep. cover Sun and Moon. Yep, we sure we sure have. In another one. All right. Um. So the next thing, uh, it, these are really topics, and I don't know why you wanted to cover this today. And I think I I don't know if because we've already been speaking for 55 minutes. Yeah, I'm I wondering if. Can, I don't yeah. know what we have. Let's skip the, and it, well, basically, guys, uh, I think next next time we're going to talk about our dream NX launch titles yeah, that's, that's because true. we could we could talk about that for quite a long time, and I'd rather we jump on into Pokemon Uranium. Just before uh, we talk about Pokemon Uranium, though, I'll, I have some sales data from Japan from okay. last week, and I thought it was pretty interesting because re- remember when we talked about Yokai Watch Tree and how it underperformed. Yeah. Well, maybe that was just a, a fluke because it was, again, the top seller last week uh, for Japan, and it's now at over a million copies sold. But the interesting thing is that last week, the UK Watch 3 actually sold 45% more than it did the previous week. So that's not looking like something that is flopping down. Yeah. So that's just that, like, and Nintendo dominated, like, Nintendo software anyway, not necessarily Nintendo published software, but... Software yeah, yeah, I get you. system like Dragon Ball Fusion was number two, Ratchet and Clank was number three. I think it's the only Sony game in there. And then there was Puzzle and Dragons, another 3S, 3DS game. Kirby Planet Robobot, which Jared dissed on Kirby earlier, but you must play this game. Planet Robobot, like the best 3DS game you'll play this summer. And then HUN Odyssey 5, Pokemon Omega Ruby is at the seventh spot, which was released almost two years ago now. Then we have both Mario and Sonic at the Rio Olympics, and at the 10th spot, we have the Minecraft Wii U version. So there's two Wii U games, seven 3DS games, and one PlayStation 4 games on the Japanese top 10 charts of last week, and I thought that was interesting to share. Yeah, very cool. Um, Maybe there was like a holiday, or maybe there was something going on. Because that's very rare that a game will increase sales. It must be getting good word of mouth. We should have checked out what the Famitsu scores were to see how it actually reviewed. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it reviewed well. Famitsu seems to review all these games pretty good, but I don't know if... Because Yokai Watch was released in the midst of the Pokemon Go craze, so maybe that kind of well, slowed maybe. down its sales, but 45% for a game that I think it's three or four weeks old now. Pretty yeah. significant. Oh, absolutely! No, that's that's definitely something. Uh, that's definitely something. So I'll just okay, man. let you talk for like thirty seconds, and I'll go grab a quick glass of water. So just tell everybody about how your day went. <laughs> well, I'm not gonna listen to him. So instead, what we're gonna do is we're going to reveal the secrets of the universe while he's gone. And you're all going to have to be quiet here and not say anything. No, no. Instead, what I, well, let's, let's just shift gears, and we're going to talk about uh, Pokemon Uranium. Now, Stephen probably has the backstory of this. I don't have the backstory of this. All I know is it's another one of these games that was taken down extremely quickly, um, and it was downloaded, I believe, like something like 1.5 million times prior to... Uh, prior to it being taken down, and, and now it's even more successful. For, so, realistically, I think, based on the number of, um, of cedars um, and leechers that I've seen on torrent sites... So I imagine uh, you've started talking about Pokemon, right? Uranium? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, but, so continue but along. First, I think I'm getting wait, 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 wait. First thing is we had the secrets of the universe, and I told everyone not to tell you. Okay. <laughs> and then uh, I just said that we're going to jump into Pokemon Uranium and that you're going to talk a little bit about um, if you know anything about its history, because I said I don't, and I said it was downloaded 1.5 million times before it was taken down, and then now you're here. Okay, and I think you, you actually talked to someone because you were trying to figure out how to record footage of the game and how yep. to use a remote while playing the game, and I think somebody told you, and it's probably not an exact science, far from it, but like there were all, all, almost like 2 million people playing online, which I find hard, hard to believe, but just to tell you, like right now this game is, is getting quite a buzz. Yeah, so like, okay, on its official website, and of course, of course, we have no way of tracking any of this, but the, the, the creator of the game said that it was downloaded 1.5 million times. Now, what I was just saying before you rudely interrupted me was that uh, if you go to torrent sites, there are literally thousands, tens of thousands of people downloading the game and uploading the game. So for that kind of traffic, like that many people, I really wouldn't be surprised if it is in the millions now because that's too many people like downloading the game. Like, simultaneous, eh? I'm not talking about, uh, like, you know, over a day. I'm saying that if you go right now, there are probably, like, you know, 2,300 people downloading the game. And that's now. And it only takes, like, maybe five minutes to download. So if the constant, if the average is, you know, 10 or 20,000 people a minute, or, you know, maybe not, that's a little exaggerating, but, like, let's say, you know, every hour, every two hours, that many people are downloading the game. That's pretty damn impressive. So, anyway... Um, so I, I really didn't have any expectations. I was actually planning on playing Metroid, and I wanted to play a Japanese RPG, and I'm still very, very concerned about, well, not concerned, but very unsure of what to do. Because Stephen keeps saying about, you know, having fun, making sure you're having fun, if you're having fun, fun. Like, this is one of those uh, series or games that if you stop playing, I... For one, I, I won't harass you because I usually harass you all the time. It's all in friendly. It's all good. But I, if someone would take your phone, would really think I'm an asshole with all the texts I keep sending you. But it's, <laughs> it's just how we say we love each other. Or like, it's so funny. but this game, like, I'm, you did. I'm, I'm really glad that you actually tried it because now we can talk about it. And there's actually a let's play that's born out of it. And if there's only two episodes, well, say la vie. Like, uh, if you don't like the game, then don't play it, but I, j- I just want you to give it a shot. Because I, I, like, I'm doing the same with this game. I had no clue. This is not one of those Pokemon games that I've played before that I can tell you, hey, you really must play. Like, I, I've been telling you for, like, 15 years to play Pokemon, and you finally did it. Uh, but this one, I have no clue, like you. So, like, you're in the, ro- you're in the mood for a role-playing game. And, like I said to you, like, this one feels, like, a bit more like a... a traditional, a bit more hardcore than the regular Pokemon games. We'll talk about it later, or we're talking about it now. So it might uh, scratch that in, that itch you have for role-playing games. It might not. We'll see. But so far, and I'm just going to dive back. You wanted me to talk about the history of it. And I don't know much of the history, but I know that this was nine years in the making. So nine years ago would have been... I imagine, right about the time Pokemon Emerald was released. Well, I'm, can you just try to track the, the timeline for Pokemon Emerald? While, while yeah, I'll well, just go Pokemon series. Yeah, It'll be easier. Okay. And it, it looks, because he's been working... I think there are two people working. One of them is called Twitch, and they're, it's not their real name, obviously, and the other one I don't remember. But I think that it's not their first ROM hack or fan-made Pokemon game, but I think this one they have really worked hard on it for nine years. And it finally they released it, and it's a complete game. Usually with Pokemon fan games, and I've never played them, but I I, I do watch a lot of Poke, Pokemon stuff on YouTube, and a lot of PokeTubers do let's plays of these various Pokemon fan games. And I not, I'm not kidding you guys. There's like over a hundred Pokemon games that were made by fans that are available online. And this one was made through RPG Maker, so I'm not sure if that's considered a, a ROM hack, but it looks to have a similar engine than the Game Boy Advance games. Okay, I just want to cut you off here. So, 
nine years ago would have been 2007, correct? If my math is not awful. Yeah. Well, in 2006, Diamond and Pearl were okay. released. Okay, so those are the DS games. So it's yeah, it might be actually based on the DS games a bit more, but no, gonna... I don't think so. I think you're right because think of it this way: nine um, nine years ago, right? The engine, if they used the same engine, there's no way it would have been based on a brand new game. It would have been based on an earlier model. So it makes sense to me that two years earlier, when Pokemon Emerald came out in 2004, that makes sense. Or 2005 in North America. That makes sense to me. You yeah, know what I mean? You just played through Emerald, right? Yeah. So does the game look similar? Because Yeah, it looks exactly the same. So maybe you're right. Because I, I it does look... I find it look it looks good, but so it, it, it's not like Emerald was not a, was not a bad looking game. It's just so that's why I'm not sure. But you're probably right about that one. Okay. Um, well, okay. I just want to before you like anything else. Um, it, right now, the the whole thing with me playing this game, it's and and the thing I'm I'm not I don't want to say scared, but. I was starting to get serious fatigue by the end of Pokemon Emerald. Mm -hmm. And not because it's a bad game, and I still have to review that damn thing. I've had the footage forever. Um, but I, that's what I'm worried about. It hasn't been that long since I played Pokemon Emerald. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's been, what, maybe like a month and a half? And what I'm worried about is I don't want to play this to sacrifice Pokemon Sun and Moon. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm worried about. It's, it has nothing to do with this game. It's, I'm very concerned that I'm going to finish this and there won't be enough time in between me finishing playing this and Pokemon Sun and Moon's release. And, and I really don't want to not play Pokemon Sun and Moon. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, that's my fear. My, my big fear is I really don't... So far, so good. So far, I, I, I feel fine. But I'm just... That's what I'm concerned about more than anything. No, I can under, I can understand that for sure. Like I, I you, I went to uh, I don't have much problem playing Pokemon games because I'm really like a huge dork when it comes to this series. So I play a lot of Pokemon all the time. But I was looking forward to Platinum, and then you sent me finally Platinum, and I played it for like six hours, and like I haven't played it for like a month now. So I understand that that series fatigue thing. The thing with this one, it, it feels fresh, and it does. I, it probably feels even fresher for you because this is you haven't. This would be your fourth Pokemon game, but yeah. for me, like it feels fresh, and I'm really enjoying this. It, it feels. Well, talk, man. Talk, talk about the game. Go ahead. I don't like, need to we'll start. Talk, there's there's a lot of negatives say, about this game, and we'll talk about it later and whatever or whenever we feel like it. But for now, like me, my biggest fear with this game is I've never been a huge fan of fake mon. And fake mon are basically the term we used to describe fan-made Pokemon. Like, basically Pokemon that are not canon. And I've never been a fan of those, because usually they're poorly, very poorly designed, and they kind of have res, like stupid stats or stupid attacks or stupid typing and stuff like that. But these fake mon, I, at the beginning I, I was not really sure, but I've been starting to really dig them. And the sprites are very, very nicely done. They don't look out of place out, or out of shape. At least, like, from screenshots you might think they do, but when you actually play, I don't know, they feel, they feel like true Pokemon. Of course, I feel like the names are a bit hard to remember. They're a bit out there, but then again, I, I always have a hard time rem remembering the name of from the Pokemon of Gold and Silver, so like it's at at this point of time with over close to 800 creatures, it's hard to find original names that are good. So I can understand that thing. And again, I'm I'm not my English is not perfect, so I'm gonna have a hard time remembering those names or digging those names, whatever the case may be. So that's a small critique of the fake mon, but. The fake mon are, or the Pokemon that they've created are very nice. I like the typings. I like the starters. Like the starters are pretty cool. I wanted the fire type, but I did not like the the, the survey is really it. They start they give you a survey, and depending on the results of the survey, they'll they'll give you a starter. But it's really easy to to choose your starter because 
the answers have a color red, green, and blue. Basically, if you pick all red, you're going to get the, the fire starter. All blue, you're going to get the water starter, and green, the grass starter. So that's cool, but they all have second typings. And you were wondering in the, uh, in the Let's Play, small spoilers, why the rival doesn't choose the Pokemon that has an advantage over you. Yeah. And I think it's easy because the game would have been impossible. Well, not impossible, but you, you would have had a hard time with your rival because in this game, the grass starter is grass steel, which means it makes it four times weak to fire instead of the regular two times weak to fire. So you basically, you would have, like you, the fire starter is the only one, I believe, that has a stab move at beginning. Stab means same type attack bonus. He has a fire move. So Amber would have killed you in one shot, easily, like you did in the battle. Well, you didn't, actually, because you used Cratch, like a noob, which was funny. <laughs> did I really? Yeah, you did, I think. Oh, wow. And then the same thing with the uh, the fire type. The fire type, I think, what's his name, Raptor? Raptorch. Raptorch is a fire ground type, which makes him four times weak to water. So it's the same thing. But I don't think the water starter has a water move right away because I know that my starter, which I picked, was a grass one, which is called Orchix or something like that. Did it learn Vine Whip its first grass move, I think, at level 6 or level 7 or something like that. So you would have been four times weak. So that's why I believe they, they, they made it okay. like that. But I'm not okay. sure. It could, be, it could be for another reason, but that's well. Another thing that's uh, also fresh with the starters is that they only evolve once. They don't evolve twice yeah. in this one. And yeah. I learned that uh, there's a... You learned that in, like, I think the first or second town, there's a school and the lady tells you that uh, that compared to the other region, the starters, they only evolve once. So that's that's pretty cool. And it's something I told you to, like, make sure to talk to everybody because it, it's not like a regular Pokemon game where most of the villagers are just there saying dumb stuff that you could not give a crap about. In this case, most of the people actually have small little things that add to the story or even better give you awesome items like a rare, a free rare candy. So what do you think about the fake mon? Because I don't want to go on forever here. Let's just talk about the fake mon for now. Yeah, yeah, okay. And I rewatched the video. I didn't talk to one person. It was That's all it was. I missed that one person somehow. Um, so, cause you had mentioned that the other day and I was like, what? I'm like, I went in all the homes. I spoke to the people by the water. I spoke to the two people on the side, but there was another one on the right hand side of the first vill okay. village that I, I didn't, uh, I guess I didn't. That's see. the one that gives you a rare candy. That's right. Okay. Yeah. That's why I, I remember that yeah. you did not get a rare candy. So I assume you, anyway. Anyway. Yeah. So that's it. So anyways, so they're called fake man. Yeah. That's the term we, we give them, but. It's okay, it should be fakey man. That'd be funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, uh, well, let's start with the starters. I mean, you're you're significantly further in the game than I am, uh, but with the starters, I I'll be really I'll be honest here. I really like the starters. Uh, like I I am I'm not a, a a veteran of the series by any stretch of the imagination. Like you said, this is officially my fourth Pokemon game, and like, I, I only experienced Rap Torch, right? Yep. But his design, to me, could have been a Nintendo design. Based off of the ones that I've played up to now, it felt like a natural, like, really, truly, it felt like like that Pokemon exists. Like, it, it didn't, I didn't feel at all that that was a fake, uh, a, a fake mon. <laughs> like, and and I think that, to me, would probably be the highest compliment I can give this game. Because the starter, at least for me, the way I play, I will keep that starter forever. Like, that's just the way I play. Um, and I, I, I've never experienced the multiplayer aspect. But in terms of the actual game, I'm going to keep that guy, unless he, he like, sucks. I'm going to keep that guy for the duration of the game. And it, it's absolutely critical that... I like that character, right? Because that's like the go-to for at least, like I say, for, for a portion of the game anyway. And, um, and I was exceedingly impressed by that. I really was. And so far, like some of the, um, some of the Pokemon that, that I, I ran into, I didn't even know they weren't real. 
<laughs> okay? And I don't know how long that lasts. I really don't have a clue how long that lasts. But up to this point where I am, uh, I really do think that the, the highest compliment or the, the, the greatest compliment I can give the game is that, is that this doesn't feel like a, for, from that perspective, okay? It doesn't feel like a, a fan-made game. I, I have no idea what's going to come because when you're in those starter areas or starting areas or whatever you call them, um, like, you know, first two towns, let's say, like getting... And, like where the first gym is so like the first your starter town then you have a real town then you have like another area where you're going to have the first gym that 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 wing if you want to call it felt very very much like all the other pokemons i've played where very very simple designs at the start um if anything my raptorch looks a little more advanced than uh, it almost looks like the second um evolution that you get, well, not the second, sorry, the first evolution that you'd get for your other starter Pokemons in other Pokemon games, if that makes any sense. Um, and so, yeah, I, 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 I don't know, I have no idea. Um, have you seen any so far that you've been like, ugh? Uh, well, there probably was one, one or two uh, that was debatable, but no, I have not. And I've looked at other fan main games with Fikimon, and basically all of them were like that. But this one does really, like, you can you can kind of sense that it's been a long time and they've done the research. Yeah, and, and, you know, kudos to them. Seriously, that's not easy to do. People take it for granted. Like, when the starters were shown for um, Sun and Moon, that um, I, it's a water type, isn't it? That little seal guy? Yep. And people were, like, knocking that, like, well... I don't know about like crazy, but there were a, there was a lot of stuff I was reading where people just were were knocking it, and I didn't. I was like, "What the hell is wrong with you guys? Like, it's cute. It it, it does what all the other Pokemon games do." And yes, you guys, everyone has their own opinion, of course. But for me, I was like, "No, it 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 works," you know. And the same thing here. Like so far, so far, um, all the pokes that I've seen, they've worked. Like they've they've looked real. I've had to look some up because I thought they were real. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's gonna be funny when you eventually do find some real Pokemon and you think they're fake. It's gonna be funny because it's gonna happen. There's, I'm sure. I've, I'm seven hours in so far, and I think I've I've encountered about eight Pokemon that are actually real Pokemon. So I think that overall there's 189 Pokemon in the game, and I'd say about 30 of those are real, and all the rest are original ones. Which is cool, yeah, man. That's, it, that's... It, it, it takes a lot of time and patience to design these creatures and then put them into a game. Like That's really well done. All right, so keep going. What else? I would like, if you don't mind, I'd like to keep going in this structure because you've played a little bit more than me, so you, you might, like, I might forget something. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> next, be, next I want to talk about the storyline and the writing a bit because usually that's an, a huge problem with fan main games is that the writing is terrible and full of mistakes and typos. So far, I think I've only seen one instance. And then again, I'm not an English major, so there, there could be really? there could be some uh, errors or some misplaced words, but I've only found one place where I think they forgot to add a word and something, and it, it's in the Pokedex description. And right now, I think there's a bug. I don't, I'm not sure about you, but when you capture a Pokemon, are you able to read the entire Pokedex entry? Because I think nobody is right now. I think it, uh, no, yeah. I don't think so. So I think it was maybe it was a bug, but I, there was a word missing. So I'm not sure if that's the only case, but so far, like, the writing is impeccable. Yeah, um, um, th again, <laughs> it's funny, I keep saying this, but that was another thing that, that I was quite impressed, I'll be honest. I was really, really impressed, uh, impressed especially with humor. This is something people take for granted. It doesn't matter what language it is. Writing humor is not easy. You might think it's easy, but it really is not an easy thing to do. And I don't know if you... Did you click on uh, Theo's uh, console? No, I saw that in your video, though. Did you laugh? And I also saw when you looked through your auntie's drawers. That was funny. But wasn't it? 
Like, I actually had a good chuckle with that, and I won't spoil it for, so for you guys. Well, you're going to see the gameplay here, actually, while I'm doing this, while we do this podcast, so that's actually kind of funny. Um, you're just not going to ha- hear anything. Um, I'm wondering if I should actually do that now. Yeah, don't make sure to turn the sound totally off. Oh, no, no, I always do now. I, I, yeah, yeah I no, have that's a good idea. Maybe like the grinding footage or whatnot. I don't know if you actually recorded that. No, I didn't. Okay. I didn't. Well, anyways, for this one, it's not really going to be any anything because well, I don't even know if the same people who are listening to this are even going to watch it. So at least it gives them. Uh, but without uh, the, without the commentary, it's not the same. Your hey, what's commentary this is fantastic. It is. I love when you you you, you take these different voices and then. Oh, do you like the thing where I'm making fun of one of them? Yeah. Like, Usually like, you start a dialogue and you don't end it. You just, by the end yeah. of it, you're bored and you just press. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm just like, all right, all right, get lost. <laughs> anyway, um, so to go back to the writing, um, yeah, very, very good stuff so far. Uh, uh, I like the fact, well, you, you'll see it in the, in, the, in the Let's Play, but I like the, the initial storyline. I just wish I could have called my character, not my character, but my rival, Steven, would have been great. Uh, that's my biggest disappointment right now. Uh, but, no, I, I like the fact that the, like, they were able to write humor. That's yeah. so challenging. And it's really well done. It's not stupid. It's not childish. It's well done, actually. And... Um, I don't know, like, if you want to go into detail of the story or whatnot, but I, I, I like the setup. I think is pretty cool. Yeah, basically, your your dad is an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because, like, they, and they don't write it that way, but that's what I got out of it. Because it, it, you see that in the first like uh, five minutes, like, basically, your 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 dad is like a, a ranger with, which I guess is some kind of police form or whatever the case may be. And your mom is works in a nuclear plant, and the nuclear plant like explodes or something, and she's never seen again, presumably dead. And then your dad just ships you to your aunt, and you don't see him again. It's it's weird, but it, it's it's fun. I can't wait to see more of it, and hopefully, like I'm pretty sure we'll see our mom at some point because it, it, she's probably not dead, or she's probably mutated, or something happened. But it's gonna be like I'm actually looking forward to meeting other characters. Yeah, me too. Me too. Um, and I think the same thing. I think the mother, they, because, I mean, they went out of their way to say that, you know, she was never seen from again and that the area was hot, in other words, radioactive, so they couldn't they couldn't get to her. So I, I have a feeling that it's going to be like some legendary Pokemon saved her, or, you know, something like that. So what's next? Let's talk about the difficulty for for a bit. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, okay. Yeah, because it's weird, because the first... Usually in Pokemon games, like, it doesn't get hard. Like, the original Red and Blue had had some challenging parts. But in this case, like, the very first trainer you meet, you can actually get popped right there. And I almost you, did. Yeah, you almost did. And it's it's funny. At first, I was... I thought it was a bit unfair. Let's put it that way. Because it's... Harder to uh, to level up your Pokemon. Your Pokemon gain less XP than they usually do in the main games. But now that I'm seven hours in, and me being a Pokemon expert, though it's a bit easier for me, so I think you'll have a harder time. But I I feel like it's a bit more balanced. Like I I haven't died yet, not really died, but I haven't lost yet. And there's been a few close calls, however, but I. My Pokemon are, right now, I haven't really grinded that much, although I did a bit. And my Pokemon are at the same level or a bit higher than, like, the last gym leader or the the, the, the trainers I meet. So I, I know that it, it's not as bad as I thought. But, like, even catching Pokemon, I find, was a bit uh, harder for no reason. Like, when you have a little two Pokemon at, like, two or three HP X escape from a Pokeball, it's it's not necessary. Like, it's not really something fun. Like, I don't mind it if you want to make, like, a legendary Pokemon or a really cool Pokemon hard to catch. That's fine. But a level 2 Pokemon with a few HP left should be an automatic catch when you throw a Pokeball. That's at least what I think. 
Yeah, um, okay, so there's two things. There's the catch rate, and then there's the, the overall difficulty. So first off, in the difficulty, you guys will see on camera that, like, I almost die at the first trainer, because the first trainer has two pokes, and I, I, I never experienced that for, uh, like, a starter area, you know? Like, if, if they're going to have two pokes, it's going to be, like, two of the... I can't even think of an example, but, but something... Um, not a Caterpie. Um, what are the ones where they're just like a, the cocoon ones? What the hell is that called? A metapod and Kakuna? Yeah, a metapod. So like the first trainers will have like two metapods or something like that. And the metapod can't do anything to you. You know what I mean? Like it's basically just a punching bag. And, and, <laughs> and that's it. whoop de doo um, But in this case, man, the thing almost kicked my ass. I, I was like, whoa, whoa. And the other thing um, that... Well, just like what you said, I tried to catch a few pokes and like, like my first ball, I got him like, you know, say, say he had like 25% health left. Um, and I, and normally that's way more than enough for like such an early level poke. That's not a big deal at all. Uh, but one of my balls missed and I was like, what? And what you don't see on camera, which is unfortunate, but I didn't want to take the chance, um, is when I caught a manky and I caught another um that that dragon one there that looks like a tentacle um both of those i had to use all of my pokeballs so i have like no pokeballs left and i bought like 10 so now i have next to no money left which i'm kind of concerned about because i bought as many potions as i could but it took like four or five balls to catch the manky who had like 5% HP. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> I, and he was level 3. I found that uh, you get great balls eventually, and I don't have that much of a problem with the great balls. So it seems like they actually have a better catch rate. Like, they, they do in the regular games, but it seems like that this is dra dramatically increased in this one. Because I don't think I've missed once with a great ball yet. Okay. Because I'm pretty much, like, what I'm doing right now is I'm capturing every po new Pokemon I see. Just to try and fill up my Pokedex, and then you never know later on if an NPC will want to trade you for that Pokemon. And that those I usually do all the time, because then you get a Pokemon that levels up quickly. Double, yeah. 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 Which is That's something a good you, idea. Might, you might have to do if you, ever, if you ever enjoy the game, but you're getting into a bit of trouble. I can always trade you one of my Pokes, and he'll level up faster for you, and Give you give you a competitive edge, but and then later there's breeding in this game. So if you want my starter, I can breed you one and then exchange it for your starter. So it's it's pretty cool. Oh yeah, that's true. Well, we'll see. Like I, I really we'll see how it goes. I mean, I'm enjoying it, so I, there's no reason not to play if I'm enjoying the damn game. Like you keep telling me, um, it's just I I. I'm really scared that I will enjoy the game fully. I'll beat the game, you know what I mean? Like, I'll go all the way through the game, but is that going to take away enjoyment from Sun and Moon? That's what I'm concerned about. Like, Pokemon Emerald, I did not enjoy as much because I started it right after Crystal. I should not have done that. Now I see that. I really should not have done that because Emerald surprised me in a lot of ways. It was better than what a lot of people had told me about. I, I really enjoyed it, but by the end, I was not enjoying it. I just wanted it to be over, mm -hmm. because it was like it's the same mechanics. You know, yeah, it's yeah. the same, same thing. And that's what I'm really worried about here. I'd rather enjoy Sun and Moon and not enjoy the end of Uranium than enjoy all of Uranium and not enjoy the end yeah. of Sun and Moon. No, no, we'll see about that, but Sun and Moon is in four months anyway, so maybe yeah. we'll see. It's uh, it's not going to be right after Crystal like you did with Emerald, but yeah. and again, who knows <laughs> when you'll have the time to play Uranium. So just it's you'll you, you'll figure it out, man. It's yeah, but this is, uh, exactly this is that, that, that's it, man. I'll, I'll figure it out. We'll see. So uh, I don't even remember what we were talking we about. We're talking now. about the difficulty and the catch rate of Pokeballs. Okay, well I, I I mentioned well no I'm good then I mentioned both <laughs> the fact that like it took me forever I have no money now which I'm kind of concerned about because this game is not easy, man. No, it's not easy, but it, it, I I think it's it's fair though. I, I, We'll yeah, see yeah. later on, because I know that the first gym leader, I know you'll have a lot of trouble. I was unfortunate because it's a normal type, and like I said, my starter is half steel, so he resists all normal type attacks. So it was a bit easier for me, but even then I had to do some tricky, tricky switching around and stuff like that. 
What levels are the? I the don't pro- remember, but I think yeah. like you've already you've grinded a lot. Your I think your starter is now level twelve. I think you I think you'll be fine. The worst case scenario is you lose the first battle, but then your Pokemon will have a, a bit more XP, and then you go again for the rematch and you win. But yeah. if you if you do level up that Mankey, uh, you'll be fine because Mankey has already has low kick, which is a very very good move to have this early in the game, and it will yep. just destroy all his. Uh, all his starters, uh, all his Pokemon, basically. So you'll be fine. And cool. make sure to go go in there with a full party of six. Even if you don't use those other, you can always use them for fodder to switch around and then heal up some others while they're dying. Yeah, yeah. Know? No, exactly. So that's it. The, 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 the gym leaders are pretty cool. I'm now on my way. I think I'm going to be facing the third one soon, if I'm not Ooh. mistaken. So it's going to be... How how's the journey? If you uh, don't mind me asking, like, has it been like good sizes, like from one village to the next, or has it been like tedious? No, it hasn't been tedious at all. And this is despite the fact of this game, one of this game's biggest fault, which is that it runs like shit. And now I think I found I found a solution for me anyway. But the first, I just found it, I, like I said, like 15 times already, I'm seven hours in, and I'm just, basically the last hour, I found this solution where the game r- lags, and I think the frame rate, I have no clue what I'm talking about here, so take this fr- with a grain of salt, but I think the frame rate was like even less than 10, 10 frames per second when I was playing it, especially in this last, last cave I just did, which was double battles all the way, those were hard to do because I basically entered a battle and then the screen would be black and then five seconds later I would see the battle and then we would po- throw my Pokeballs. It would take five seconds for the Pokemon. You, you understand it was really, really slow. And mm-hmm. I did some research online and basically none of them work until I tried the battery saving option because I, ch- I heard that before and the guy told me not to have it on battery saver and it wasn't on battery saver. It was on whatever the normal is. But then I went to advanced settings and then there was a, a, a mode to make it like... Uh, you're, you're talking about in your... in the game? No, in or? my laptop. On my yeah, laptop, exactly. It's on, ba- ba- no, it's, I, it's on custom, but basically it was like advanced, advanced settings. So basically your laptop will die in like 30 minutes with the yeah. settings, but it makes the game run almost flawlessly. So... Like, I was almost tempted to restart the entire game because I'm sure the experience would be even better, but whatever. And, like, it, like you asked me if it was tedious, and I played it through that, and I found it enjoying. So, it, it, it's pretty cool. Like, all the caves so far have been pretty short, so they, it, it seems like they don't want to make anything tedious. They don't want to make it too boring, but they just want you to have challenging battles. And the fun part about this game is, of course, encountering new Pokemon. Because there's going to be a lot of new Pokemon in this one, because there's over 150 new ones. So you're, 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 you're glad always, every time you see a new patch of grass in a new cave, because you're going to encounter new Pokemon. And right mm-hmm. now I have four Pokemon in my team that, I'm, that I know I'm going to use till the end, because they're kick-ass. And I knew just by looking at them that they were the right, right choice for, uh, for my team. So I can't wait. I have two spots open. I I really badly need a water type right now because I don't have one, and I'm gonna try to fish a new one. What's your What's your team? Right now I have my starter Orchinx, I think his name is, which is the grass steel type. I have the the snake one, which is, which is what grow. You caught one recently. I don't remember the name. Grow charts or something. Yeah, it's not whatever. Okay, it's a, basically a snake. That's a ground type, but I, he's about to evolve into a, a dragon soon, so that's why I got him. He looks pretty cool. He's very weak, though. He's still very weak now. I hope he's not that weak when he gets to a dragon type, but at least he'll have a bit more... Uh, he'll be immune to a, a... Not immune, but he'll resist a lot more. Like, he'll, he'll resist fire. He'll, rivet, he'll resist electric. He'll, he'll resist water. He'll resist grass. And I think he'll resist normal, but I'm not sure. But he'll resist a lot of types. So even though you're weak, that will help. And then I have my little sheep, which is a black sheep. And he's now evolved. That's the picture I sent you, the Pokemon that was evolving. Yeah. I'm not sure what his name is. Batchart, something like that. 
But what is it? It's a dark fighting type. And that's the one I, I told you you need to trade because it's a trade from with an NPC. Oh, yes, 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 yes. You st- evolves. It's from the guy that fishes, right? Yeah, yeah. It, well, it's not with this guy, but you need to go see the guy to get the rod yeah. and then get the water Pokemon he wants. But if you're talking to everybody, you'll you'll see him uh, in the next town. And okay. my fourth one is a bird I just caught, and it already has evolved, and it's awesome. It's a flying fire type, which is perfect because I needed a flying type, and I needed a fire type, and it covers both ground. And so far, he's really, really awesome, and I've been super lucky with my natures. Like, I, I don't know if you know much about natures, but basically what okay. natures does is it improves one stat, and decreases one other. And with this one, like what I needed to be was to have a high special attack, and that's the perfect type, perfect, well, not the perfect nature, because that perfect nature would have been modest, because modest uh, decreases the attack, which you don't care, and increases the special attack. I think I got impish, which increases the special attack and decreases the defense. But I don't care about that. Like These are not meant to be competitive Pokemon. They're meant to play the, the game itself. So I can live with that. But I'm really happy that he has a good special attack style. And the same thing with my future dragon snake, which is adamant, which means that's perfect because it increases its attack and decreases its special attack. And I don't need special attack because he's going to be a physical guy mostly. So I'm really loving my team right now. And... That's it. I don't know what I was actually going, what I was saying here, but I don't know if you have anything to add to what I was saying. I don't remember. Um, (laughs) We're really professional, aren't we? Yeah, we are. Um, Well, no, you started, okay, no, you were talking about the lag and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And I was saying that, like, well, for me, like, I just checked rate while you were talking, um... Here, power options in control panel. I have mine on high performance, okay? And I, I turn off my display in 10 minutes, and I put the computer to sleep in um, 15 minutes, and if I go to advanced power settings, you know, I, there's all kinds of stuff which I don't do. It's fine. Um, but I have mine in high performance, and um, so I, I mean, you saw the video. Was it bad? No, the video sounded good, but like I told you, like I didn't really have any issues or permanent issues with the game until after like close to the second gym and then yeah, I, I, I will be very surprised if I have problems I mean my my computer is a monster yeah that's that's what I think you'll be fine but it's just for everybody out there because this is a I, I, I assume it's a pretty decent laptop so I wouldn't I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if anybody else has the same problem even if they have a beast laptop out there just if you do try it on, try to modify your battery savers options. Yeah, and you said just to put it to advanced, right? Yeah, instead the, of the, basically the highest you can. Yeah. Okay. So for everyone that's not Steven, there's a very high chance that you're on Windows 10. Um, just put it on, take it off of balance, go into advanced options, and switch it to performance, which will then change your computer to basically give you the optimal performance. And that's it. So basically what it means is that when the computations increase, like the calculations, it'll just boost out extra juice at the sacrifice of your hydro bill. That's all. <laughs> all right. So that's, I, I guess I can talk a bit more about the, the stuff I did not like. Yeah, that, like, that's actually that, what that, I, I would like you to do. That was the that, that was the number one, was the performance, which... Now it seems to be fixed. I'll cross my fingers, but hopefully it's permanently fixed. And if it is, like I'll, I'll have like a smooth ride all the way through this game. The other thing is just a, a bit of a buggy experience. Like the fact that when there, you catch a new Pokemon, you can't read the Pokedex description. It's, it's bugging me. It's not that big of a deal, but it's bugging me. And sometimes during battles, I don't know if it happens to you, but for me... Before the text ends, it just cuts and the action begins, and you you don't know what the attack the your opponent did because you you didn't have the chance to read it and stuff like that. It did. Yeah, there, there's little things like that that I've noticed. Like some of the animations are too quick. Yeah, so they don't. I, I, and I don't remember. Like I, I seen one bug when I was in a double battle, and I, but I'm pretty sure that was because of the performance where. One of the Pokemon, even after he what he fainted, stayed on the screen, and they did not give me XP from having fainting him. And then when the battle and then that was it. Like it was funny. Like it said victorious, but there was still one Pokemon there. 
So there, there's a bit of a few bugs here and there. Uh, of course, this is a free fan made game, so it's to be expected. Expected, but it, it, it like just the fact. Like if you would have, we, if you would have done that podcast like five hours ago, I would have had a different opinion. But now, since I figured out how to fix this, I really don't have that much negative things to say as of right now. In fact, if I complete this game, I'm pretty sure I'm going to review it because I'm having a blast with it so far. Well, I really have nothing to complain about. Honestly, right now, I'm I'm ex- just like exceptionally impressed. I, I, I don't want to... I, other than like a couple of little things, like I said, with some of the animations being a little bit too fast, I'm not a huge fan of the... Um, the 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 I don't want to say the battle menu, but the way like the health is and and the exp and stuff like that. Um, I would prefer that when I like click on the Pokemon um, button, like I would see exp like a, just a line, just little little just tiny little little things. And th- this is just Jared talking. This isn't you know whatever. But outside those little tiny elements. Uh, it feels like a real Pokemon game, which is blowing my mind that someone, like, someone made this, you know, for, yeah, it took nine years or whatever, but such few people made this? That's unbelievable. Like, absolutely unbelievable. Yeah, it is, and if you like Pokemon, then give this game a download, try it out for yourself. Like, I, I've never tried out the fan game, never been into them, but this one changed my mind, so it might it might be uh, worth a check. I still haven't tried the online portions, and I'm going to try that. Maybe sometime we'll get a chance to uh, trade some Pokemon and see how it works. And that's pretty much it for now, because I don't want to ruin too much of the surprise. I want them to enjoy the Let's Play and look forward to a review of this game if I eventually complete it. And maybe you have some final thoughts to say on Uranium before we move to Blast from the Past. Well, I don't really have anything else to add. Uh, the only thing that I would say is if you want to try the game, there are countless ways of uh, of trying it out. You can even go to the official site and you can find places where you can you can download it. it it's available all over the place, so don't uh, don't mind, you know, like don't worry. You can you can get your hands on it and you'll always be able to get your hands on it now that it's out there. So anything else? Nope. Let's move on. Blast from the past. Okay, Your blast turn. from the past um, is is going to be it's my turn this time, and I've done it twice as far as I can say, or maybe three times actually. I talked about um, those uh, gargoyle games. I talked about um, oh god, what when was it called? Which way? Sorry, every which way? Yeah. That's it. And I also talked about the Nightmare Before Christmas, the Metroidvania style one. But there's one other game. Um, this, this one, it is. It has been lost to time completely, and I don't know why. Uh, one of the single most impressive games for the Game Boy Color. Uh, it sold very, like, a lot of copies, did very, very well, very successful game. Yet, it's. It's lost the time, really. Like, I don't hear people talk about this. And I'm, I apologize if you guys hear a lot of background noise. There's, like, I got water running all over the place because uh, I can't close the door. It's so bloody hot in here. So I apologize for that. Serena's just having a shower, which I know is not very professional. But, hey, we don't have a studio. So uh, if you guys can get us to 47 million subscribers, maybe we can get uh, a real studio. Make that happen, people. <laughs> anyway... So this particular game that I'm talking about is part of a series that is really, really, really uh, near and dear to my heart. Steven hated the fourth entry in the series, even though the whole world loved it. Uh, Neither one of us have played part five. And a, an offshoot or a side series or a whatever was just announced. So what game am I talking about? I don't remember what it was called. Is it Metal Gear, Metal Gear Solid Gaiden? Okay, no, that's so the here's the thing. Gaiden, right? I'm, I'm yeah, it's actually called Metal Gear Solid Ghost Babel in Europe. Um, but in North America, bizarrely, it was called Metal Gear Solid. And... 
it is not at all Metal Gear Solid uh, in the sense that it's not it's not just a port of Metal Gear Solid, and I, and I wonder if that's maybe why it got lost to time. But people really do forget this game exists. When I talk to a lot of people about it, and I do plan to review this uh, as part of our Retro Wednesday feature because this is a phenomenal game. It actually blew my mind how good this is. The writing is sharp. Graphics are absolutely awesome for it being a Game Boy game. Well, Game Boy Color game. And the fact is that it plays exactly like a Metal, like Metal Gear Solid. Like you got the cigarettes that you have to equip in order to uh, see the laser grids as you're sneaking around. It's got you know similar sound effects and everything. And it, it basically is a portable version of Metal Gear Solid, except a totally different game. So just think, call it, that's why I like the European name, Ghost Babel, because it, it's, it's not Metal Gear Solid, you know? It's its, its own thing. Um, and this was years before the PlayStation Portable came around with, you know, the Metal Gear Acid series and then Portable Ops and, and so on and so forth. And... I think if you if you really want to play a game on a Nintendo platform that was never ported anywhere else and is only been, as far as I know anyway uh, was never put on virtual consoles or things like that I could be mistaken but I, I don't think so um, go ahead and, and pick that up I I'm not sure how rare it is these days how expensive or or any of that but it's a it's a fantastic game that time and fans have completely forgot that it even exists. And it's a shame, too, because it's, a, it's just, a, a, just a fantastic game. I've never actually tried that one. This is one of those You games. never played that? This is, this, this is on, on my Christmas list, Jared. Make a note of it. All right, wait a okay. sec. Hold on. <laughs> that's that's going to be a wrap, I believe. Did wait a minute. Wait a minute. Metal <laughs> Gear... Solid. Yeah, but I, let's check the price. It could be uh, worse than the Virtual Boy. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't spoil anything, though. Don't spoil I it. didn't spoil anything. You're spoiling it. <laughs> Just say nothing. <laughs> All right. Well, nice pick. Nice pick, man. Can't wait. Next time, I'm going to have to try to surpass that. We'll see. That was a nice podcast, man. Wow, we're over a hun- an hour. I was going to say 100, uh, an hour and 45 minutes of content here. That's going to be fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Again, please leave us a comment. This is the thing I enjoy the most about these things. Leave us a comment. Tell us how stupid we are or how you disagree or agree with what we say or whatever you want to say. Leave a comment. That's the fun of making these things. Exactly. And um, even though in the intro of this podcast, you guys saw that we're on iTunes, I just want to reiterate that, um, that this podcast is now available on iTunes and you actually get it first. If you subscribe to iTunes, you will get our podcast first because I'm not hiding the uh, publications. So it's sort of like a little treat that if you subscribe to iTunes, you will get the podcast usually a couple of days early. All right. So just an That's FYI. A incentive, man. Not bad, eh? My head, it's not just to hold my hair up. <laughs> That's a beautiful <laughs> set of hair, though. Oh, yeah. It's glorious. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So, as always, thank you very much for watching, and we will catch you all in the next episode of Nintendo Fanboys.